see from your face that you were victorious. Indeed. I put the White Tenlin down, who was enraging his kind, and destroyed their nests. The attack should no longer trouble you. As for the missionaries, we were able to convince them to leave, although they were not willing to reveal their involvement in the attacks that caused you such harm. And so they were in some way responsible. I had my suspicions, but I could not see their reasons. They brought a particularly large beast here that attracted and enraged the others. This is what provoked the attacks and brought on our despair. These people have blood on their hands. In the end, we found the missing young ones. But alas, it was too late. Devoured by wild beasts. Undivorced to your end. You did well on our Manawi. Now they shall be able to find the rest. Will you agree to accompany me now? My cousin needs your help. I have packed what is needed. I am ready to journey with you. Stranger in a marionette set ablaze, consumed by a smoldering fire. The moment's growing near, isn't it? Am I about to surrender my ghost to the Reaper of Souls? You pop in just when you're needed, cousin, as always. Who are you? Your hand is cold as ice. Your cousin is burning. That is such a relief. Let me present Katisach, Constantine. He is the greatest healer on the island. He will help you. Please, stay. I am here for you, Rnaikse. And I will not leave until I found a way to ease your pain and suffering. Fill your mind with the patience of the ocean. I know not how much time I will need. I've never seen such a sickness. The spirits of your lands must be quite horrendous to cast down such evils upon the peoples that live there. Thank you. Well, that science surgeon of the Alliance was good for was letting blood. Until he run out of vials. I give you my last ounce of hope. Thank you, cousin. I don't want to imagine my plight without your intervention. Greetings, Katasak. We're dear to Matt. What can I do for you? How is my cousin doing? He's filled with dread as death approaches. Forgive him his mood swings. He's such a young boy, and he had so much desire to live. Thanks to my treatment, he suffers less. But his disease is getting worse, and I don't know what to do. It would take a power far superior to mine to break the grasp of this evil. I'm looking to meet Enon Miel Frichtemann. I went all the way to the village council. But they did not let you speak to Glendan the Elder. Precisely. They said that only the friends of a member of the council might enter. And my word was not enough. It seems that I must be a mal to be hurt. Do not be sad, daughter of Bladnid. One day you will be as great a chief as your mother. And you too will have a seal. This seal will allow you to give voice to the friends of your clan, those who may speak in your name. Here, friend of Wenshavye, take my seal and go and meet Glendan. 
But you must convince him and no doubt pass many trials. Many monsters and traps are hidden on the path you seek to follow. Thank you, Katasach. Why are you helping me? We do not wish to lose the one who placed his life in my hands. And you have already shown me your friendship. I hope that Glendan will allow you to meet this god, cousin. Leave as soon as you can. Godspeed. Have no fear. I'll do whatever it takes. I must go. What are Willem sick?
not want to shed blood. We want to give light back to the earth. Do you not understand that these woods are sacred? What's happening here, soldier? These islanders want to enter a plot of land that belongs to the congregation. They are denying us access to the glade. We must heal it. Otherwise, this land will die. I am sorry, but we cannot let you enter this area. But we only want to plant some new trees. Bring life back. These people are fanatics, Your Excellency. Several woodcutters died last night. And I'm willing to bet that these savages had a hand in it. You are killing the Earth. So it kills you in return. All of you are cursed. Shut it, you savage! The Sade. I'm the legate of the merchant congregation on this island. I came to shed light on this affair. You said that some woodcutters died. Aye. They fell sick and died a few hours later. Well, the camp doctor will be able to tell you more about it. You'll find him in the barracks right here. Thank you, soldier. I'll go see him. Please, Your Excellency, you may come in. Hello, Doctor. I am the legate of the congregation. I was told about the disputes caused by this camp, and a soldier told me that several woodcutters died recently. Yes. They got sick yesterday afternoon, and a few hours later they were dead. I couldn't do anything except watch them writhing in pain. None of my remedies worked. If seeing corpses doesn't bother you, you can come and see the bodies. They're here. I hope that whatever killed them is not contagious. These poor woodcutters look like they've suffered. This one has a swollen tongue, blood at the corner of the mouth. There are some peculiar red patches on the bodies. His eyes are bloodshot. This man choked to death. Strong smell of ammonia. The entrails must have been perforated. The appearance of these bodies and the smell emanating from their mouths leaves me in no doubt. They were poisoned. That this doctor could have believed that this was simply an illness is beyond me. I can't see anything else of interest. So, what do you think? Do you recognize their disease? They didn't die of disease. They were poisoned. There's no doubt about it. You're probably right. But I've heard these savages talking so much about curses. So I thought it must be a mysterious disease, rather than seeing what was before my eyes. But how could these three men be poisoned? Did they drink anything in particular? They like to drink their fills in the evening. Life is dreary here. But if the poison was in the alcohol, I'd also be on the pile of corpses. What did they eat yesterday? Did they eat any mushrooms? No, no, we avoid that kind of thing. Uh, we don't know enough about the region's plant life. The congregation provides us with dry produce, otherwise we eat game. Yesterday they butchered a beast brought by the hunters. Hunters? Natives who bring us game regularly in exchange for knickknacks. But they've been restocking us for months. I struggle to believe that they're involved. Well, we'll see what they have to say. Where can I find them? They usually hunt on the edge of the wood that leads to this camp. We were looking for you. Us? What do you want from us? 
Three woodcutters were poisoned yesterday after eating what you brought them. Poison? I swear we are not responsible for this. Listen, all the clues lead to you, but it may simply have been an accident. How about you tell me exactly what happened? It wasn't really an accident, but we did not want to kill them either. Then tell me how it happened. We did not decide to do this. We were trading beautiful things with the camp. But the Elder said that we would be traitors to our clan if we let the woodcutters cut down all the trees. Which Elder? One of the old men from Vigigidor, our village. He is very angry because we cannot heal the glade. He gave us the meat of an Andrig killed by a venomous Dossentat. Its flesh is perfectly edible when prepared with certain berries, but without them, eating it would be lethal. And since the Renaixe invaded our forest, these berries are nowhere to be found. He wanted it to be a lesson for them, so that they may understand that their destruction brings death. I will not hold you responsible. But from now on, you will no longer bring me to this camp. You are the instruments of a hateful old man's vengeance. And I'm under the impression that there will be even more deaths if I do not get to the root of this problem. This old man is devious. The method he used was very... original. But now people have died. The woodcutters will want vengeance, and things will only get worse. This whole thing could turn into an open war. We cannot let that happen. Sir de Corsillon will be able to give some advice on how to solve this property conflict, without violence. Sir de Corsillon. The Sade, my young student. What can I do for you? The mission you entrusted me with has made great progress. Very well. Let's see. Good. You have traveled great distances, and the Terra Incognita will soon be but a distant memory. Keep doing what you're doing, de Sade. Can your old professor still prove it? I found no traces of Professor Seraphedin yet. That's most regrettable. But keep looking for him, will you? You never know. Can your old prof... I have come to find you because I received a complaint from the natives of the village of Vigigidor. They want to be able to access a clearing, exploited by our woodcutters, to heal it. To reforest it, I assume. But our men there say that it belongs to them, and are refusing to let the natives enter it. The site was supposedly ceded to them several months ago, but tensions are running high and some men have lost their lives. If we don't intervene, we're heading for a real confrontation. It is very regrettable, and I approve of your desire to appease this conflict. According to what you have told me, if ever there was a contract, it must have been signed under our former governor. You should go to the archives and verify this. Then go and talk to Lady Lorraine de Morange. And of course, I'll be delighted to help you once things have been clarified. Thank you, Professor. Once more, you've been of great help. Can your old Professor still prove himself useful? Looking forward to seeing you again, Sir de Corsillon.
day, dear sir. Happy to see you again in such fine health. How can I be of service? I need you to enlighten me about the property deed of a glade near Vigigidor. The natives want to access this place, which, according to them, is sacred, and which they would like to heal. But some of our men there are using this deed to deny them access to the area. Tensions are running high, and some people have died. Yes, there was a time when we enacted a lot of contracts. Do you have the document with you? Yes, here it is. Hmm. This session agreement is only signed with a cross on the native side. Well, writing is foreign to them. As is the notion of land ownership. For them, the Earth only belongs to itself. If they did not possess these lands, how did they cede them? Well, I doubt they knew what this agreement represented, to be honest. In that case, why make them sign it? When we arrived on the island, we had to ensure our access to certain commodities. We also had to make sure that we had legal ownership of the lands we were occupying. The natives dreamed of possessing some baubles that they didn't know how to craft. It was easy to make them sign agreements that they didn't understand by giving them some. I was a stranger to their philosophy then. I only thought about my city, and I regret it. I'm sure we can fix this mistake. I hope so, Your Excellency. Come, let's find Sir de Corsilion. Can I help you with any other matter? My lady, I have to go. Goodbye. Sir de Corsilion, it's always a pleasure. Madame. I expect you've come to see me about this regrettable problem concerning a clearing, which my student told me about. Indeed. And I think I may have a solution that will allow us to solve this conflict peacefully. Hmm, I'm listening. I must admit that I established this at a time when the culture and the mentality of the natives was foreign to me. The clan of this village was rather open to our presence. They welcomed us with benevolence. For this reason, I think we should allow them access to these lands. In doing so, we would appease the tensions, and we would also retain ownership of the wood. We would even benefit from such an agreement if the natives reforest this area. Then we could exploit it for a longer period of time. I find this decision perfectly viable, and I approve. But several men were killed and their comrades will seek vengeance if the personal persons responsible do not pay for their crimes. I am convinced that Dunkus, the chief of this clan, never approves such an action. I understand, but I will only write a decree allowing people to go to this clearing, provided the murderer is delivered to us. Thank you, Master. I will inform Dunkus of your decision. What brings you here on Omanawi? At this old man's request, I investigated the conflict that opposes you and my nation regarding the clearing. You will now be able to access it freely, to accomplish your rituals or heal the area. And the congregation will keep exploiting the forest. However, there is one condition to this new agreement. You must deliver this man to us because he is responsible for the deaths of several woodcutters. These men died because of their own foolishness. No one else is responsible for their deaths. If they hadn't cut all the ochre berry trees, they would have survived. What does that mean? What are the two of you talking about? Three woodcutters died after eating the meat of an andrig after it was killed by a venomous Dawson tats. It's nothing but a terrible coincidence. And if they had eaten the ochre berries, we know that you are responsible for this. The hunters told me everything. How could you do this? You acted more foolishly than an irascible adolescent. By killing these men, you have brought upon us their wrath. And it is only natural that they should ask for justice. Dunkus, I beg you. I only wanted the Renoixe to understand the value of the trees they were cutting. Bloodshed only leads to more bloodshed. And you know that. I would never have thought you capable of doing something so foolish. 
If you want to stop the woodcutters taking vengeance into their own hands, you must deliver this man to us. I understand. But I have one condition before we make this agreement. The Lugayer Blau fooled us in the past. It is their turn to prove their good faith. What do you want from us? There is a mine in the forest that the congregation has long operated with help from my people. But digging into the mountain has risked it collapsing. We reinforced the earth with wood. We worked with the Lugaid Blau to save the mountain and the men. We agreed to stop digging and sealed the entrance with a boulder. But some Renaigse came back, and I think they started digging again. And some of my people started going missing. Perhaps because they had seen them break their promise. If the mountain collapses and it is your clan's fault, thousands of lives will be lost. And you want me to intervene? You have to stop them. Remind them of their promise. This is the price of my trust. If you do, we punish the person responsible for the death of the woodcutters, and all our quarrels will be gone. I'll go to this mine and see what's going on. Is there anything else? I must leave. Goodbye, Dunkers. Kwa Awalam Seng. Sorry, this is private property. I cannot allow you to enter. Actually, no one should be able to enter. This mine is doomed. It's terribly dangerous. I wouldn't know. Our employer, Mr. Mayard, is the owner. He's got all the deeds required. Listen, you should go to the authorities. They can confirm all the paperwork. I definitely will. how dangerous this is. We should take a closer look. We should take the path that overlooks the outer wall. We should be able to see inside from there. Those reckless fools. They've resumed operations in the mine. Those chained natives are no doubt the ones Dunker spoke about. They use them to operate the mine. They've made them into slaves. We must talk to Sir de Corsillon. I hope that our nation is not involved in this business.
Sir de Corsillon. The sad day, my young student. What can I do for you? I've come to ask you about a mine near Vigigador. It was closed for a long time for security reasons. But someone has started exploiting it again. Hmm. I seem to recall that a concession in this area was sold to a master Maillard. However, I do not recall the details of the contract. It was established by the previous government. He is a rich merchant from Serene who arrived on the island only a short while before we did. People say that he is unscrupulous. <laughs> unscrupulous? That's an understatement. This man had some natives captured and he's using them as slaves to work in this mine. What? Does this old brigand really think that he is above the law? We cannot tolerate such methods, but we must determine the best way to attack him. You should start by finding the deed to his property in the archives. Don't worry. We'll not let this man's behavior go unpunished. Can your old professor still prove himself useful? Looking forward to seeing you again. written in a foreign language. I get lost in all the legal jargon, but they have Lady Moronge's seal on them. We should find her to understand exactly what they say. Is, uh, happy. I need your advice once more. This time it's about the property deeds of a plot of land and of a mine acquired by a certain Maillard. Here are the deeds. I must admit that I understand very little of what's written, but your seal is on it. Hmm, do not worry. This type of document is always difficult to decipher for the uninitiated. However, they are very clear. Master Maillard is the owner of a plot of land located near Vigigador. He can exploit the forest and plant anything he wants there, but it says here that he does not have the right to exploit the mine. It's even repeated in this other paragraph. Any attempt at mining on this land is forbidden. And yet the mine which was located on this plot of land has been reopened and is being exploited as we speak. According to these documents, the mine has been closed for security reasons. This man's behavior is reckless. You should go see him. He's presently in New Serene. He usually spends time at the port when he comes. He has some warehouses there. Master Maillard. Who's asking? De Sade. I am the legate of the congregation. Well, I'm flattered. What brings you here, Your Excellency? I'm here to talk to you about the mine you have near Vigigador. Are you aware that you have no right to operate it? Nor are you allowed to employ slaves there. But what are you talking about? Surely this is a misunderstanding. Listen, I'm sure there is a way for us to get along. I'm an honest merchant. 
I've always paid all taxes and the small bonuses needed. Please tell your cousin that I would be happy to send him the gift of his choice. Now, Your Excellency, if you will allow me, I have to get back to my activities. I'm afraid you don't understand, Master. It's not a money problem. That mine is dangerous, and you endanger the congregation on this island by behaving this way with the natives. Come on, don't be so serious, young man. I'm sure it's nothing that a small bonus can't fix. Goodbye, sir. Best wishes to your cousin. Sir de Corsillon. The Sade, my young student. What can I do for you? I verified the contract with Lady Morange. The exploitation of the mine is illegal, as we expected, without even taking into account what he's doing to the natives. I then went to meet Master Mayard. So, what did he have to say in his defense? He turned a deaf ear and tried to bribe me. Oh, some of these merchants are so rich that they forget basic decency. But it's high time we reminded him of who is in charge of the congregation on this island. Here, this is an eviction notice which dispossesses him of all his land for breaching his contract. For his crimes against the natives, he's banished from this island. I will make him aware of this decision, but you should go to the mine immediately. The prisoners must be freed as soon as possible, and the mine closed once more. I'll take care of it. Can your old professor still prove himself useful? Looking... Sorry, this is private property. I cannot allow you to enter. I don't need your authorization. I have here an eviction notice signed by the governor's ministers. The former owner, Mr. Maillard, has lost his rights due to a breach of contract. Look, ultimately, we are not the ones who decide. We only obey the boss's orders. In that case, where can I find him to notify him of his loss? You'll find him around here somewhere, Your Excellency. Excellent. Are you looking for trouble? Master Maillard, I'm so glad to find you here. Here is a document from Sir de Corsillon on behalf of my cousin. Considering the fact that you have not respected the terms of your contract of ownership, you are hereby expelled. The methods you used against the islanders has also ensured your banishment from Tear D. Impossible. By what right? Guards, this man threatens me. To my help! These people were despicable. I'm pleased to have finished them off. Let's free these poor islanders and find Junkus. Go without fear. You are free. And know that we are sorry for what happened to you. We must believe that not all of them blow or alloyed. He is an on all manali. What brings you here on Almanawi? I was able to close the mine. 
The man who operated it was arrested and he will be banished. Yes, those you freed told me. From now on, you are my Karantz, my friend. You knew how to renew my trust in your clan. Just as trees grow back after being cut. Thank you, Dunkers. I'm on it. Will you give us the old man now? If you allow it, I would like to punish him myself. Enough blood has been spilled, and he will only call for more of it, since he loved the forest to the point of killing for it. He will be sentenced to heal it. Every day he will replant what your men will cut down. Every day until the end of his life. Does this punishment seem acceptable to you? If I explain to Sir de Corsillon that the man was sentenced to forced labor, I suppose he will approve. Thank you, Dunkers. It's a wise sentence. Is there anything else? I must leave. Goodbye, Dunkers. Qua awalum seg. You have returned. The rule. Here is the seal of the Denegad Katasach, of the village of Wenshavie. And so you are a trusted friend of the great healer. He must see your true face and find it worthy. Enter. You are welcome. I give you warm greetings, Glendan. I am Desarde, legate of the Congregation of Merchants. Your merchant congregation sways me very slightly from my part. But you are a current of Katasach. His trust in you makes me stop and look at you. What brings you here? I seek a remedy. My cousin, as well as many other people on our island, suffer from a terrible sickness. We think that only Enon Miel Frictiman can help us find a cure. Really? And Katasach sent you to see me? He told me that the only way to meet with your god was to come and see you. You would judge our worthiness. Judge your intentions? Yes, that I can do. But even if I should do this, you would have many trials to pass. For the path you seek to follow has only been tread but a very few times, and you are the first Renaixe to set foot upon it. We must begin where everything begins. There is a trial, the trial of water. It will show us the reflection of your soul. What must I do? You must go to a cavern and tell me what you see on the seal you will find deep in its center. And this cavern is guarded, I suppose. That is true. But the simplest solution is not always the best. It is a path with many forks. I hope you will prove that you understand the spirit of our people and our island. Go now. Show us your true face and return purified by the waters of the cavern. I must leave. Goodbye. Qua awelem seg. You have spoken to Glendon as you wanted. What more can I do for you? I was asked to pass the trial of water. What do you know about it? 
I have never passed it. Only those who must reveal their soul walk this path. The High Kings and Queens, it is a tremendous honor given to you, Renaixe. Do you have any advice to give me? I only know that the trial can be passed in many ways, and your choice will reveal the makings of your soul. One way is through strength, the other by ruse and heart. But I know no more than this. The trials are kept secret. Anything else? Nothing else, thank you. I need to leave. Good luck. And do not lose yourself in your own reflection. These beasts are feeding on that carcass. If only we could pour some sleeping potion on it. I do not have a sleeping potion on me. My help! And death to the others! Watch out! Grenade! Another one of those monstrosities. Look at the basin and the symbols around it. Given the islanders' taste for rituals and enigmas, I think you should touch the water. Either you've been taken with a fever or you've had another vision. You're shaking like a leaf. Yes. Once again, I was something else. Oh, another story to understand and candles to light, I imagine. What did you see? I was in the sky. I was floating, carried by the wind, and it was a cold feeling. I was high up, and it was getting colder and colder. I felt my blood freezing in my veins. I fell to the ground and spun slowly. And then the sun warned me. Suddenly I bounced on the ground, and I was taken by the bubbling current of this creek. Then, just like before, the vision dissipated. And I was suddenly with you again. This stone is blackened, eaten away. I think it's supposed to evoke death. This stone bears the image of a storm, or perhaps the wind. On this stone, the sun is visible. The drawing on this stone makes me think of fire. 
I'm certain. This drawing looks like an infant. Could it represent life? Here this looks like a snowflake. The snow, or maybe ice. This stone is adorned with the etching of a drop of water. This must be the seal that Glendan spoke about. It looks like the silhouette of the mountain of Tirfredi. And a face is drawn within it. Here to mad on Ormanawi. I congratulate you for passing the trial. Enter. And so you have returned. Can you tell me what the seal deep within the cavern brings into your mind? A face in the mountain of Tirfredi. Then you have seen the true face of the island when looking into her waters. And the island has seen inside you. You have given the blood of the animals that protected the entrance to the passage. You have chosen strength a first time. In choosing the path of silence, you avoided confronting the Dosantats. Finally, you have completed the ritual. And in so doing, the Guardian recognized you as a wise man. You choose to trust the way of rules and wisdom. It is a difficult path, but it carries generous fruits. The island has seen your intelligence and also your compassion. The friendship of Katasach towards you no longer surprises me. Am I authorized to encounter Enor Mil Frichterman now? To present him with my request. If the High King agrees, yes. We shall not oppose that decision. Only a High King or High Queen is allowed to open the sanctuary. I warn you, your voyage is far from over. I suppose that I'm going to need to convince them as well. Where can I find them? I do not know. And I believe that it may be another trial on your path to find the one you seek. Is he hiding? Has he been captured? He disappeared several months ago. Since then, we have not heard from him. He was worried about the Renaixe. The last people to have seen him, I'm told, were the most important chiefs of the clans here at the council. There was Dedra, Blatnid, Ulan, and Dunkas. I fear that Queen Bladnid can no longer help us. Yes. We have learned of her fate. Some battles cannot be won twice. Dedra is the Mal of the clan of the Storm Warriors. You will find her in the village of Vedlug. I've already met her. She sent me to confront a guardian. That sounds like her. Ulan is the Mal of the village of Vignamri, near the coast. It is said that he welcomes the Renaxe. As for Dunkas, he leads the Vigigidor. He is the chief of the Earth Healers. His village is not very far from the Didekid and Nadagais. Very well. I will go and see them. Try to find this High King. Thank you, Glendan. Kwaawalamsek. I hope that you will find him.
Lieutenant, I demand an explanation. Tell us what is going on. We haven't heard anything about Lord Dorsey's condition in spite of our inquiries. We are extremely worried. And then, all of a sudden, one of his guards appears, shaken and on his own, though he is part of his retinue. Please, allow me the chance to shed some light, my lady. Your soldier is nothing more than a coward for abandoning his highness. Tell me, what is going on? This soldier has just reported in. He is asking for reinforcements. He believes that Lord Dorsey has been attacked. He believes? He ran here without full knowledge of what happened firsthand. I... I was sent on patrol far from the camp. But I heard screams from men and from beasts. I wanted to return to camp, but then I heard a deafening sound, grinding like a landslide. I thought then it would be best just to go and get help. Thank you, Lieutenant. You are dismissed. I would like to have a discussion with this man alone. Yes, sir. My lady, could you lead these fine people into the hallway, if you would be so kind? Certainly. I deplore this embarrassing turn of events. But know that you have my full support in all circumstances. In the interest of avoiding a general panic, tell me precisely what happened back there. Your cousin ordered us to escort him beyond the town limits. The islander convinced him to go on some journey. By islander, do you mean the Denegad that came to treat his affliction? Yes. A strange bird. Missing more than one feather, you ask me, sir. I, I was ordered to set up patrol along a small path, rather far from the rest of the company. I was told to protect our perimeter from anyone wandering along. According to the islander, it was the only access to their planned destination. I did my rounds for quite some time. Not a soul came along. But then I heard cries a ways off. And I went running to help. I heard an enormous crashing sound, li like an avalanche of rocks. So then I turned right back around. And you ran all the way here? Do you know precisely where the company was when you heard these sounds? No, not precisely. I hadn't gone there. But I could show you where I was posted. The Islanders said they were following the path. But he was quite a ways ahead when I lost sight of them. Why didn't you go and look for yourself? To see if they had been buried by a rock slide. What? Alone? What could I have done? It seemed of greater urgency to go and get help. I'm still having trouble deciding if cowardice or intelligence got the best of you. But that's a question for your superiors. My cousin was quite weak. Do you know why he decided to follow the Denegad? His Highness was feeling much better. The potions that he was drinking must have been potent. I mean to show no disrespect to His Highness, but that islander had the high ground in the War of Wits. I wasn't privy to their counsel. I haven't the beginning of an explanation for the expedition, but your cousin was all full of enthusiasm and ordered that we set out as quick as we could make ready. That sounds like him. What sort of mess has he gotten himself into? Again. I am sorry, sir. But I don't know anything else I could tell you. Dismissed, soldier. Looks like I'm going on an expedition. Thank you, sir. <laughs>